Hey, hey, Rick Says here. Welcome to Season 3 of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, recorded at the Surf City Studios in Costa Mesa, California. I have another great season of interviews with retailers, brand managers, athletes, executives, and others in the outdoor biz to share their stories, tips, advice, productivity tricks and hacks, and ideas you can use to take your career business to the next level. Today's podcast is brought to you by WordPress. I've used WordPress to build a number of websites, including Stillwaters Consulting and the Outdoor Biz Podcast. There are a number of themes and plugins available, both free and for purchase, enabling you to easily create the custom look and feel you want. If you're starting an online business, publishing a blog, and looking to take your online presence to the next level, visit theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash WordPress and get going today. With simple installation tools and thousands of themes to choose from, you'll be up and running in no time. Go to theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash WordPress and get your site launched today. All right, the second episode in Season 3 of the Outdoor Biz Podcast is with photographer Adam Barker. You've seen Adam's work in various brand ads and catalogs, including Yeti, Mountain Khakis, and more. Adam tells us how he became a photographer and what it's like to get the shot, no matter the conditions. Enjoy. Hey, Adam, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rick. Glad to be here. Good to chat with you this morning. So you, you're in Salt Lake City, outside of Salt Lake City somewhere today? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Collinwood Heights, so out near, uh, kind of the mouth of Little Collinwood Key. My house is about, I don't know, 10 minutes with no traffic from Snowbird, which is, oh, is a good place to be, you That's know? A great yeah, place to for be. sure. Yeah, good for you. And how did you get into the outdoors? What was your first outdoor experience? You know, I, one of the first outdoor experiences I can recall would have been skiing at Mountain Dale Golf Course with my with my dad in Mountain Dell, there's no chairlift. It, it, it literally is a golf course. So, you huh. know, you're strapping on these skis to your feet. Um, and I remember him pushing, pushing me down the hill. And it was a total disaster, but <laughs> it stuck with me and, and I loved it. So yeah, I, I that, and, and to this day, you know, if you knew me in high school or college or whatever, my entire life was structured around skiing. And I think that had a large part of, of getting into outdoor photography was figuring out how I could call skiing my job. Right, you know? right, so, right. so yeah, that was kind of my first, one of my first outdoor experiences for cool. sure. Did you guys do other outdoor stuff? Did you camp and hike and all that? Yeah. You know, the list is long. There's only yeah. so much room in the garage and only so much time on right. the schedule, but I'd say my most, you know, passionate outdoor endeavors, definitely fly fishing, mm. um, skiing, you know, I do a lot of cycling and mountain biking and mm-hmm. camping with my kids, and but but kind of definitely within that zone. If I'm not skiing, I'm fishing. If I'm not fishing, I'm skiing. If nice. I'm not doing one of those two things, then you'll probably find me on the bike. Yeah, cool. Very fun. And did you have a traditional yeah. outdoor job? Did you work retail? I, you know, I actually, now that I think about it, I worked in a rental shop at Cole Sport, which okay. is a ski shop up in, in, in Park City for a year. But really my first outdoor job was at the river guide up on the middle fork of the salmon. Oh, you know, nice. 21. Yeah. Great, great introduction. Obviously. Oh the, yeah. Yeah. I was a guide. On some the of them all time. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, hard, hard work, but yeah. amazing office. You know, we'd ran five day trips on the middle fork and I did that for two years and that was, it was an awesome experience for sure. Yeah. Very fun. Did you got, did you run any other rivers or just guide on the middle fork? I do. It was mostly the middle fork. We do the main, the company that I worked for did the main salmon as well. Um, but yeah, I would run some other rivers here in Utah just for fun, like mm-hmm. West water and we'd get down on cataract and you know, it's funny to be honest, like it hasn't really been, a huge part of my life since I got married and I don't own the gear, but, yeah, but, yeah. uh, really kind of was super passionate about it for a period of time. And I actually did a shoot on the middle fork of the salmon, uh, two years ago, which oh, cool. was like stepping into the halls of my high school. It was so nostalgic. <laughs> it's been, been a long time since I've been back there. And yeah. It was, it was awesome to get back. Well, where do those boys grow up? You'll get rafts in that garage at some point. I know. I know for sure. <laughs> or kayaks or something. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I got it. It's it's one of those places I got to get them out on for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, how did you get interested in photography? You know, I took a my only formal training back in the day was a black and white photo class in high school, hmm. um, and I'd had some. I don't know. I guess I had some interest in photography, but that was kind of my first introduction. It's not like I picked up a camera and was immediately like, "Oh, this is." 
this is my destiny or mm-hmm. as the great George Mc, George McFly once said, this is my density. Right. Um, but it, it was not my density at that, at that point, but I kind of enjoyed it. My dad gave me first, first SLR I ever had was a Canon FTB, which is literally like a, a tank or a boat anchor with a neck, <laughs> neck strap put over, put over right. it. So heavy, but, um, yeah, I started just kind of messing around with it in high school. And then as I got into college, uh, I was traveling more and having more cultural experiences and experiences around the world and just kind of had maybe discovered a talent and, and a skill set, but most importantly, a passion for the mm-hmm. medium mm-hmm. and kind of really just wanted to share those experiences in those places with, with other people. Cool. So college was when you knew it would be a career. When did you know you'd make a, a, a career out of it? Um. You know, I really kind of, I didn't necessarily know that it would be my career mm-hmm. until, I, I, so I, I guess I should back up. I studied communications in college with a major in PR, and I worked in PR in the ski industry for about okay. five years. Sort of and, related. And during my time, yeah, kind of, you know, I was able to actually kind of establish a network of contacts, and at least in the editorial and media right. related fields, and, and uh you know, I just, I started a business on the side and basically I kind of knew it was going to, and then in 2008 is when I jumped out to do it full time. But gotcha. I think I don't necessarily know that I knew it would be my career, but I knew I would have to pursue it as a career mm-hmm. at that point in time when I really couldn't quit thinking about it. It was um, kind of occupying my thoughts night and day and, mm-hmm. you know, unbeknownst to my boss at the time, I was spending the greater majority of all of my uh, all my time at work trying to look up new photography gear and, <laughs> and, and what, what, what was I going to get next and what was right, that? Right. Going to How are you going to use so it? Definitely yeah. kind of, yeah, for sure. Cool. So what was uh, one of your most epic assignments? Gosh, I was thinking about this and, you know, I think for, I, I had, and I, I won't, I don't do a lot. Like the word assignment, right. Use more in an editorial sense. So I'm going to just use this. Yeah. You do a lot of, of like you do a lot of jobs or whatever. Yeah. You do a lot of catalog shoots and you do a lot of shoots. Yeah, exactly. For, yeah. So the, I'm sure so, you know, the, think, the weather doesn't always go as planned on those things. No. And this one was actually way more kind of schedule oriented, but I was doing mm. a shoot for Yeti coolers maybe a year or two ago, probably two years ago or so. And we had, basically six days we we're in three different states um it was colorado florida and and uh iowa wow. i think and you know ridiculous shoot schedule we were shooting some ambassador work for them um, one of them was uh kind of a stand-up paddler guy ken hovey in uh, colorado and then the legendary foot palette who is a, an angler in the all-around badass outdoorsman right. um down in florida and then uh we wrapped up with tiffany and lee lakoski who are hunters in 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 iowa and anyway so vastly different subject matter different locations it was i was happy to be getting about three or three and a half hours of sleep at Oof, night a lot of travel involved yeah a lot of travel um Per the norm, you know, the weather did not necessarily cooperate. The light didn't necessarily cooperate, but that's, that's my job. You know, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it seems like it's linked recoveries. And I think the difference between, because obviously professional photography or photography is very popular, mm-hmm. but I think the difference between a professional and an amateur is that you're able, you know, if it's C plus conditions, you still got to create you get an A shot. plus yeah, image right, or right. yeah, a very minimal, an A image and, yeah, you know, we got it done. Yeah. I was very tired. I slept for a long time after that. <laughs> <I can imagine. laughs> for sure. How about, how about flip side? One of your most enjoyable assignments? I think one of my most enjoyable. You know, ever since I picked up a camera, Antarctica was mm. kind of one of those locations that I, I had to see, I had to get to, I had to photograph for myself. And so I've done. I've been down there twice. Nice. Um, I went down in 2014 and in 2016, and I've taught workshops down there both times. Oh, cool. And, you know, I love teaching. Um, uh, I, I love teaching photography. I love mentoring. But to, to be able to do that in a place like Antarctica oh, was, was all time. I mean, it's, it's an unbelievable spot. It's everything yeah. you think it would be, you know, like pretty cold, but wildlife is unreal. Icebergs, yeah. weather, the Drake Passage is, is definitely 
something to be reckoned with for sure. So yeah. it was it was an amazing experience. I was down there in 2005, I think, or maybe even 2004, oh, okay. a long time ago. Yeah. When I was at Eagle Creek, yeah. we used to get these, we advertised in their uh, catalog, and so we they'd have these okay. trips all the time, and we get the, the ad guy would call every once in a while with these deals because the trip wouldn't fill, so they had you know two spaces left, and said, but you got to yeah, yeah. leave like tomorrow, you know, and it never fit the calendar. Oh, man. Yeah, but this one fit my calendar, and I thought, you know what, I'm going, but... You're yeah. right. I mean, ever since I've been down there, I've just been jonesing to get back because I know so much more about photography now than I did then. I mean, I was, I was kind of a point and shoot guy then. It's just, you know, it's gotcha. amazing. The light, you know, it's just, it's phenomenal. Totally. It's, I tell people if Antarctica is on your bucket list, go now because yeah. you just, you never know, you know, what yeah. might happen where it, something could occur and they no longer allow you know, trips down there or whatever. You right, know, it's right, one right. of the very last unspoiled places on this planet. It is. It's right. unbelievable. Some of those, you shoot for Mountain Khaki too, don't you? They, they look like fun shoots. They're fun I did. people to work with. I did for a period of time. Yeah, yeah. super fun people. You yeah. know, Jen Taylor there, Ross Saldarini. I mean, really great people. In fact, I really, I credit my shoots with Mountain Khakis for kind of being a, a turning point in in my career in terms of shooting mm -hmm. lifestyle and active lifestyle work, you know, to that point, I'd kind of been just shooting more core, core outdoor stuff and really kind of was able to shoot higher production stuff with them where, you know, we're going to cool locations and right. fun props and, you know, the talent is, is obviously not agency talent. There's great people, just yeah, super yeah, fun yeah. crew. And, yeah. you know, if we're talking about epic shoots, those are up there every time. You yeah, got yeah. like dawn till dusk all yeah. day, every day. So, yeah, good times be, for sure. You got to be fun, yeah. And so, how much of your work is driven by you know catalogs versus I don't know? Do you shoot for magazines or what are some of the other assignments? Yeah, I mean, the, basically, the spread of my work would be uh, you know commissioned act, commissioned work for clients like uh, Yeti Coolers or Columbia Sportswear or mm -hmm. Panasonic, Lystra, um, you know, a number of different brands. Right. And I'm and I'd say you know, that's where the majority of my income is coming from is shooting, you know, collateral marketing collateral and mm -hmm. asset library type stuff, yep. you know, content for, for those brands. Um, I do plenty of editorial, but it's mostly spec stuff. You know, gotcha. I'm not really pursuing a lot of, uh, assignment editorial work in the outdoor realm. It's just not really the, the direction that I've gone in to be perfectly honest. You know, it's, uh, the older my, I got three boys, you know, three yeah. sons. They're eleven, eleven, nine, and six. And the older they get, the less I want to travel. The more I want to be yeah, home. Right, so, yeah, exactly. um, yeah. I'd say it's you know really about seventy, seventy-five percent you know commissioned um, commercial work versus other other filler. And you, you know, get out for fun. Then, yeah. Man, I wish I could say absolutely, <laughs> but I don't <laughs> yeah. quite as much as, as I did at one point, 10 years into my career. You know, I, if I'm being perfectly honest, like a lot of the time I'm thinking, how is this image going to put food on the table? Right. Which <laughs> right. I, I don't know if that's a terribly sad statement or well, a I think very that makes sense. I mean, re makes responsible sense. statement. I don't know. You yeah, know, I yeah. do, I do, I do make sure and try and get maybe one trip, or two trips a year where I'm shooting scenic landscape stuff oh, for cool. me. That's good. because that's where my photo roots are, right. you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's where I kind of gained my love for photography. And I, it's obviously a, a kind of a difficult industry in which to make your living if you're just based on scenic landscape. So I don't shoot that yeah, as much almost anymore, impossible, but it, yeah. it's still what I love. And yeah. so, yeah, I definitely try and get out and do it for myself, like at least one trip a year. Right. And do you do any nonprofit work? Do you shoot for any nonprofits, or do you participate? Do you work with any nonprofits? Yeah, I I, de I actually just got back from a trip to Kenya with LifeStraw. They do a oh. program called Follow the Follow the Leaders, which is super rad. For every LifeStraw Go bottle, which is a rad water bottle that's got their LifeStraw filter in it, for every one of those that's purchased in the U.S. and Canada, I believe. Um, there's a good percentage of the profits that go to this program in Kenya. And they also do it in Nepal and mm -hmm. India where they're providing drinking water, safe drinking water for school children for a oh, year. Cool. We'll and so, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. They, uh, they're an amazing organization. They're pretty much the only private sector company that's really kind of taken on that, uh, that 
that battle or that endeavor. You know, there's a lot of, you know, NGOs and, and other yeah. entities that are doing that. But in any case, um, was there for a week with them and amazing to visit these school children. And, you know, they're getting these massive life straw community water filters. And, oh, cool. and it, it, my wife was able to join me on that, which was nice. even that much cooler. Yeah. And just to see that part of the world and be exposed to that was, and was water amazing. is such a huge issue over there. Oh my God. That's... It's, it's, you know, it's 100% what people structure their life around. Yeah, you know, totally. you see people yeah. walking at four 30 in the morning with, you know, containers on their head to get to their water source. And they got to make a one it's hour something... walk to get there and back, you know, correct. Something. Yeah. It's correct. Crazy. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Pretty nuts. Um, so do you have any suggestions or advice for someone wanting to get into photography? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I've, I've got maybe three bits of advice. The first one, which I think is kind of forgotten in this day and age is simply to do the work, you know, like you got to put your head down and grind. I think there's a lot of people, well, uh, you know, maybe the younger contingent these days, there's this, <laughs> and it has to be too with digital photography, but just not, you know, as opposed to having to wait for film, but right. you know, there's this expectation of being able to just jump in and see massive success. And, you know, it's a, it's a labor that requires time. You know, the thing is what, 10,000 hours to, yep. to master a craft. And, yep. and so that would be the first thing is, is do the work and don't forget that you, there's just no way around it. There's no shortcut. Right. Um, you got to get up early. You got to stay away. You got to send the emails. You got to do the promo. You need to brand yourself. You need to have a good website. You need to stay updated. You yeah. need to continually be creating new work. I mean, there's an endless number of things. So that would be the first is to do the work. The second would be to remember the value of relationships mm -hmm. because ultimately, no matter how skilled you are um, or the reputation that precedes you, in my opinion, this business, like many businesses out there, is based on relationships. It's yeah. people that hire us, right? It's right. people that yeah. sign our checks. It's people that rehire us or choose not to. And, you know, it, so it's like so vital and so key to establish and maintain relationships. And then lastly, I would say to stay the course because it's a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's full of ups and downs. Yeah. And if you really want it, you know, you got to be in it for the long term. And I mean, if six months is not enough, one right. year is not enough, you know, three years, you're just at the, really the very the infancy tip. of yeah. your career. Yeah. And so, you know, if you really want it, I mean, even with me being a decade into this, obviously it's still very much a, a roller coaster. The the work could be really consistent and then not, you know, and, mm -hmm. and somebody said the other day on a social post that like this, that you need to adapt adapt or die because yeah. the, the industry is consistently evolving. So yeah. stay the course man, and, and if you're passionate about it, driven, if you're skilled, if you do the work and remember those relationships and you're bound to succeed for sure. Yeah. That's good advice. Yep. And, uh, do you have any daily routines you use to keep your sanity? I'm sure those boys keep you busy. They do for sure. That's one of my routines. If I'm around, I love to see them uh -huh. like exit the front door and go to school, watch them, watch them go to the bus. Like it's just kind of one of those things I do because I know before I know it, they're going to be like driving away and then <laughs> exactly. they won't be living here. And then they're not going to want anything to do with dad. But, yeah. but for me, it's exercise, honestly, mm -hmm. like I have to exercise. So in the summer I'm on my road bike, usually five days a week. I try and get out early. Um, that'll allow me to, if I need to be sitting in the office, you know, if I'm not shooting, I can get, I can crank work out in the office in the winter. It's usually skiing, um, or actually the gym, you know, I go to the mm -hmm. gym a lot in the winter too, cause I can't, uh, cause if I'm not getting the cardio, like I want to skiing. So exercise is, is at the very tip top of my list. If I haven't exercised, I'm, I'm pretty grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> it, it helps us. A lot of us keep the, the creeks and the kinks out and clear the head and all those things for that's, sure that's a good thing yeah for so sure you you must spend a fair amount of time in the office doing your own editing and whatnot do you also do you also write a bit correct i do yeah, yeah. having a background in in pr right. and my mother was an english major bless her heart for all the <laughs> grammatical corrections that she gave me over nice. the dinner table yeah. <laughs> many many years in the making um but yeah I, I i really enjoy writing and to be perfectly honest like i think it's really important part of what I do. Mm. Um, everything from a first impression email, you right. know, mm -hmm. um, and, and the impression that you're giving to 
providing a vehicle to editorial publications to actually publish your work. You know, it's one right. thing to approach an editor with a bunch of pretty pictures and say, hey, can you find a spot for these? It's another thing entirely to reach out with an article or a pitch um, or a plug and play type article where they can, you can say, Hey, here's, here's the whole package, you know? Right, so right. It, I, I think it is important to, to have, if you're not a good writer, then it's not like it's over. But if you are a good writer, that's it, it another right. feather, feather in your cap for sure. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And uh, do you have any favorite books that you've read in the course of your life that have inspired you? Or do you give books as gifts very often? You know, I'm embarrassed to say that I don't spend a whole lot of time reading books. Yeah, that's um, cool. What's this? Not all, I don't not have all of us like, do. <laughs> I know. I don't. And I thought about this, but I spend a lot of time reading magazines, to oh, be yeah. perfectly honest. Because it's like that short, you know, I yeah. can kind of, it's like a decompression. Yep. You know, sometimes for me reading, for some people reading books is, is a huge release. For me reading books at times feels like an assignment because I'm like, I got to get through this book and yeah, inevitably yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. like get to and it. some and, books you put, um, you know, you pick them up and you don't put them down for six months. They're so it, huge. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I know that's going to make me sound incredibly uneducated. Not but at all. I spent not a lot of time. I, I You're not the first guy to come on here and say that. So. <laughs> but one of my favorite magazines, to be perfectly honest, like, and, you know, it's the part of the Surfer's Journal and Ski Journal, but the Fly Face Journal is like, mm-hmm. I always give, sub- give subscriptions to people for that. I love that magazine. That's and it's beautiful one. from a from yeah, a editorial and their paper, you know. They can use a little work on their race, what they pay. <laughs> 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 you know, it's like, my favorite thing about it, like one of the few publications that I proactively submit to on the fly fishing side because, uh, it's so beautiful and they do such an amazing job. Yeah, it is. They do great sure. work. Yeah. I'll, I'll link to that in the show notes too. That's a good one. Um, I give, it's funny that you mentioned that too, because I never thought of that when I asked this question. You're the first guy that brought up magazines and cause I give magazine subscriptions to a lot of folks and yeah, it's still a form of reading and there's some great magazines out there that are just, you know, super quality. Great totally. articles. And I, I think it has to do too with, I love print media. Yeah. You know, as a photographer, I never want to see that die. I yeah. still love holding oh, yeah, print I gotta media have in my hands. My hand. yeah, yeah. And um, turning the pages, you know, feeling the paper, right. studying the imagery. It's really how photography is meant to be viewed that way. It's either meant to be viewed, in my opinion, hanging on your wall or yeah. sitting in your hand. Yeah. Because um, that's how I digested it growing up. And so. Yeah, magazines for me, when I travel, I'll always pick up a new magazine at yeah. one of the airport, you know, kiosks or whatever. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of a comfort. It's my comfort thing, you know. I, yeah, I like having a magazine to flip through. Yeah, I've always had a bunch of subscriptions. And I and like you said earlier, it's you can get you can jump in and out, right? You can get a little snippet, read an article, totally. put it down. You don't have to commit to the book. <laughs> totally, yeah. totally. Um, so you're outside a lot, all kinds of weather. What's your favorite piece of outdoor gear under 100 bucks? So I got two. Can I, yep, can I do two. two? You can have two. All right. First one would be my Leatherman. I've had a Leatherman wave forever. Take it with me everywhere. Um, and, you know, I think from my time as a river guide, I had mm-hmm. that thing on me like all the time. And, and so I don't wear it on a belt anymore. <laughs> like <laughs> you, My wife nicked that a long time ago. <laughs> Way too goofy. Yeah. But Leatherman can't do without it. Good. Uh, like and that. then the other one is the headlamp. You know, oh, yeah. my headlamp, it could be in up early and out late all the time. And it seems inevitably, we always find ourselves, for those of us that enjoy time in the outdoors, we're always like, it, you know, we always find ourselves in the dark, literally yep. in the dark. Yep. <laughs> and so Often. Every day one. we're in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. We're still trying to figure it out. So yeah. there's one in my car. There's obviously a bunch in my office. There's one in almost every backpack. You know, they got to be there because uh, inevitably you'll find yourself out there having forgotten to pack one so right. i have one stashed stashed all over the place that's good that's come up a lot yep headlamp that's a handy tool to have um for sure so as we finish up here is there anything else you'd like to ask of our listeners or say to our listeners oh man i would just i would just ask them to keep doing what they do if it's a great industry that we're a part of mm-hmm. it's it, Based on, in my opinion, you know, obviously we're all gear junkies. We love the, the gear, but it's 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 
founded on and based upon good people. And yeah. we, st- we just need good, great, conscious people continuing to, you know, lead these outdoor brands um, to be a voice, you know, for good, whether that be environmentally or from a labor standpoint or, right. or whatever it is. So I think we all, we both, we both know, and I think many of the people hopefully that are listening to this know that the outdoor industry is chock full of like grade A people. Oh, so yeah, I yeah. would say just continue to fight the fight. I love it. Yeah. Good. Right. Good. Keep it up. That's good. That's been, that's been, that's why the podcast keeps living on. You know, it's all these great people that yeah. are willing to come on and all the great people that listen. So it's a, it's a wonderful tribe to be a part of. Um, Absolutely. And if anybody wanted to follow up with you to f- ask any questions or anything, how would they find you? For sure. Um, you know, probably the best way to keep up with my work is on Instagram, just Adam Barker Photography. Obviously, my website is adambarkerphotography.com. Uh, if you want to reach out to me with any questions by email, I get questions all the time from uh, from aspiring photographers. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, or if you want to hire me, absolutely reach out <laughs> to me. My, my email is adam at adambarkerphotography.com. Perfect. Um, but yeah, you know, stay t- just tune into the Instagram. It seems like that's where I'm, I'm most consistent. Cool. Yeah. Well, we'll For link sure. to all those in the show notes and uh, push that out on the socials. Well, thanks, Adam. It's been great catching up with you. Hey, Rick, I appreciate it. Will I see you in uh, Denver? You going to the show? We'll see. We'll see. I, I hope to make it out this year. I've been spoiled or on with OR here in Salt Lake City for the past <laughs> um, 10 years, you know, yeah. so I got to get it on the calendar now as opposed to just stepping out my front door and driving downtown. But I hope to. Okay. I cool. hope to. Good. Well, maybe we can grab a beer while we're out there. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, man. Okay. Thanks, Rick. Take care. Bye. All right. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Adam Barker. You can see Adam's work on his website, adambarkerphotography.com. Follow him on Instagram, where he is at Adam Barker Photography, or catch up with him by email, adam at adambarkerphotography.com. you find links to everything we discussed in the show notes at outdoorbizpodcast.com slash episode 115. Be sure to hit your favorite podcast app and subscribe today. Thanks for listening. Today's podcast is brought to you by InMotion Hosting. I've used InMotion Hosting to host my websites for years. Rick Say's Photos, Blog, Stillwaters Consulting, and the Outdoor Biz Podcast are all hosted with InMotion Hosting. If your New Year's resolution is to publish a blog, produce a podcast, or simply secure a domain name, go to theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash inmotion and sign up with them today. They make it simple and quick to get a new site up and running with easy installation tools. That's theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash inmotion. Get going today. If you want more of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, you can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. Be sure to go to the outdoorbizpodcast.com where you find all the links to the episodes, show notes, and much, much more. And be sure to make time to get outside and take someone with you.